Hey, what's up everybody? This is Steve from Snow Foundry. So AMD's new processor, the Ryzen series, was just released and I was able to get my hands on the 1800X. That means that it has eight cores, 16 threads, and can go up to four gigahertz in speed. So awesome processor and it's supposed to rival all the high-end Intel processors, but for even less money. Uh, and obviously the first thing I wanted to do, being me, is see does it run Linux on day one, which is maybe the worst choice anybody can make, but I wanted to give it a try. Let's go ahead and get started. We've been waiting what feels like forever for AMD to release a new processor. Over the past few years, it hasn't been very competitive. Intel has released a lot of great processors that are competitively priced, and we were stuck with what is basically a five to seven year old processor series uh, with things like the 8350 really being the top end model and with the other processors not delivering an increase in performance. Ryzen changes all that. Ryzen is the processor we've been waiting for. Ryzen is faster per clock and it's more scalable. The new models have eight cores, 16 threads, and they can go much higher as AMD continues to evolve the product line. Another big deal is, is that the power consumption is much lower. Even this eight core model that I have is only 95 watts. That's a huge change from the previous 8350, which only had four cores and took more power. Because Ryzen is a brand new architecture with a brand new AM4 socket type, it means that your options for cooling are limited. If you buy a lower end model, they come with a built-in cooler, but for our higher end models, we need to pick one off the shelf. I picked the Corsair H110i, which is a setup where it has a radiator, it has two giant 140 millimeter fans, and it just delivers the cooling through water to the CPU cooler. Uh, I really like this setup because it enables it to run cool and quietly. Those fans blow a lot of air through, and then that way I don't have to have the fan in the middle of the case on top of the CPU sucking in air. I can move it back to the front of the case, which gives me a cleaner look inside. Speaking of the case, I'm super happy with the Corsair Carbide 400C. I normally don't buy that brand, but I wanted to give it a second chance, and I have not been disappointed. The fans that come with it are very high quality. It comes with two 140 millimeter fans. It has three SSD bays. It has a power supply and hard drive bay, which is on the bottom of the case. So you can effectively hide those and not have a mesh or be on the right-hand side, which makes it really hard to put in with a radiator. This solves all of that. I can put the radiator in just fine, and I have tons of space to work in there and give it that clean look uh, and allow the air to flow through and cool the system. I picked up an Asus Prime X370 Pro motherboard, which was one of the higher end models, but I really like the Asus models uh, because of the quality they have. They're really well built, they have a solid BIOS, uh, it's easy to update, it's easy to control, all sorts of different settings, and I haven't had one fail, and so this is my go-to board. I also have an EVGA 80 plus gold power supply, which is fully modular. It's only 650 watts, but because Ryzen is more efficient and because the 1080 I'm gonna put in here doesn't take a ton of power, it's more than enough for what we need. And it's fully modular with the Japanese capacitors, uh, which means I don't have to worry about durability or reliability issues. In the past, I bought crappy power supplies and they caused me more damage than they were worth. And so I always go high end on the power supply. I'm also gonna use the Samsung 850 Pro SSD because these are great SSDs. They can sustain a ton of writes, so that means I don't have to worry about them failing or bet that they're an off-brand. Uh, they come with a strong warranty. And then I picked up some Crucial Ballistics 32 gig DDR4 memory, uh, dual channel, so there's gonna be plenty of performance that I need to really push this processor. So I went ahead and I put everything together and now it's time to turn it on for the first time. This is a super important step because you never know what you're gonna get. Uh, it's always possible you forgot something, you missed something, or that you got a bad part. So I'm turning it on now, it looks like it's going. One thing I like to do is stick my hand in there and check if the fans are blowing air. If you don't feel air blowing, it could be a sign that they're either not working or not plugged in, and that's gonna cause problems down the road. Depending on what fan it is, it could be a very bad problem where it actually burns your hardware out. So make sure all your fans are going, that the system's running right, that there's no obvious beeping noises, etc. And if everything looks good, we can go ahead and install Linux. I've hooked the system up to my Dell U3415 34 inch widescreen monitor, which has presented challenges in the past with Linux. Uh, the reason is, is because it's 3440 by 1440, and it uses DisplayPort. And so the combination of those things means that there's not a ton of these types of monitors out there in developers' hands. And so whenever you have something like that, uh, it's interesting to see how it works on a new system. Now, because this is a day one Ryzen system, I kind of expect that not a lot of things will work, uh, but I have OpenSUSE Tumbleweed. 
And OpenSUSE Tumbleweed is a rolling release distribution. That means that it always has generally the newest code out there, which means that it probably has the best driver support. So we're gonna see what happens. I got it booted in the BIOS, which is a good sign. It shows everything's working. It sees all my RAM in there. So it shows that I got the 32 gigs total. Uh, it shows that all my cores are online and it shows that we're at 3600 megahertz like it should be. Uh, voltage, temperature, everything looks good. And it sees our Samsung drive. So given that the BIOS looks good and that uh, we actually have graphics and everything, we're gonna go ahead and try Linux and see how it goes. Okay, and so I told it to reboot and it's gonna go ahead and pick up that USB drive I have plugged in. And we're gonna see if a screen comes up. And there we go, so we got our Grub installation screen. Uh, that's perfect because if you don't see that, uh, that means something's wrong or that you made the USB key wrong. And if you don't know how to make the USB key, uh, check out my other videos on installing Arch Linux and installing Gen2 Linux. I make all the USB keys the same way using that method. And uh, it's really important to get right because if you don't make the USB key right, then things are gonna seem more difficult than they should be. Uh, so we see that OpenSUSE is starting UDEV, which is trying to detect various pieces of hardware, etc. Since it doesn't know anything about our system, doesn't know any of the drivers, and this is probably a super difficult system, uh, since everything is brand new. And even since the I made the USB key, there's been driver updates, uh, especially around Ryzen and that chipset. And so these things may take a little bit and they'll continue to just get faster every single update. Uh, this is actually super cool and surprising that we're already in a graphical interface. Um, in the past, I had a 980 tie and this was about a year and a half ago. Uh, it wouldn't always be a guarantee that you'd even get into graphics mode depending on the system. And so the fact that this is able to boot into a graphical installer from a 1080 card, which is brand new, uh, and actually gets the installation screen is going to be a very good sign for the system. Okay, and so then it's initialized and now it wants us to pick a language and just agree to the general license. Uh, so we'll go ahead and click next here. And this is basically just a standard installation. Uh, Ryzen appears to be working out of the box uh, along with the 1080 tie and uh, all the new parts. And so that's uh, very promising. No you know, hackery or any type of funny things I'm doing. I'm not passing things like no mode set. Um, it also detected my network card. So I'm gonna go ahead and tell it to do an installation from online that will make sure I get the newest packages rather than what's on the USB key. Uh, which will help, especially in hardware enablement. So if there was a new driver change or fix that came out, uh, I'm gonna install with it already, uh, rather than having to update after install later. Okay, so since everything's looking good, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and speed up the video. Uh, because I told it to use the online repositories, it's gonna go ahead and download like four gigs of packages from the internet, uh, which is gonna take quite a while. So I'm gonna go ahead and let this download, speed it up a little bit so that everything uh, moves faster. And then we can see in the moment of truth, is the system gonna boot up or not? Uh, sometimes when you had these graphics cards, especially in things like Ubuntu and uh, other distributions, even when you rebooted, you would actually use the graphics driver that's installed and you wouldn't know what you're gonna get. So when we reboot here, the question is, is, is it gonna boot up and is it gonna get us to a graphical screen? Uh, so we see Grub again, which is great. That means that the installation worked and we got to the right drive. Uh, this is actually not the USB keys grub. This is the Samsung 850 Pro grub. Okay, and we have some text there and now it looks like it's adjusting its resolution and uh, it's just still the same text. And then it goes into the boot screen. So uh, the boot screen looks good. The reason it doesn't take up the full resolution is, is that most boot screens are not high res. So if you look at Windows or OS X, et cetera, they're not necessarily like retina boot screens. Uh, it just depends on the design and the scaling. Uh, but this is really cool. It looks like actually we are already at full resolution. So we are now booted in the desktop and it's at 3440 by 1440. And that's without me loading any drivers or configuring anything. So I had thought maybe at best it would go into a, uh, you know, 1024 by 768 or something like that since we didn't have the official NVIDIA driver installed. Uh, but in this case, it did detect a resolution, it detected the monitor and everything looks great. So we are in a desktop, and now this is with the open source Novu driver. So uh, we haven't installed the official NVIDIA proprietary driver yet, which means that uh, we probably don't wanna play games and stuff like that, but for general usage or for just you know pure freedom, if you don't like having a binary closed source driver, this system is totally usable, it's fast, it's responsive, uh, and most importantly, it got the resolution and the refresh rate right, and so uh, everything's really good. It's really cool to be able to open the system up now and I see that I have 16 uh, cores. Now there's only eight real cores, that's 16 threads total, which the system just views them as cores. 
uh, and you can see in the activity monitor there, they're all being used and uh, it's working really well. So yes, Ryzen does work with new Linuxes. Uh, this OpenSUSE is running uh, Linux kernel 4.10. So if you have an older kernel, it may not work or you may not get the same results. Uh, and what we can do now is we can actually download the proprietary NVIDIA drivers. So I'm going to go ahead and click this and uh, download the driver and then we'll run that and get the proprietary driver installed. In order to install the NVIDIA driver, I'm going to follow a guide called NVIDIA the Hard Way, which is on the OpenSUSE wiki. I'll put a link in the notes if you want to follow it. Basically, all I'm going to do is I'm going to paste this command in, which is going to install the dependencies, and then I'm going to go to a console and install it. Uh, the reason is, is because the open source driver and the closed source driver are not compatible. So what we're going to want to do is, is we're going to run the installer, and it's going to tell the system, hey, never use the open source when it's built in. Uh, what we're going to do then is we're going to reboot it so that when we reboot the system, uh, there will be no open source driver on it. And then we're going to run the NVIDIA installer again, and it's going to be able to install itself, and we can just boot right in, and then we'll be running on the official NVIDIA driver rather than the open source one. Okay, so I've went to the console, and I'm running the NVIDIA installer now. Uh, it takes a second to extract it all, and I'm going to say, yes, I agree to the license, continue installation, and then it's going to say, hey, I detected the open source driver. Do you want me to go ahead and remove it for you? And so I'm gonna say yes to all that, and then the installer is gonna exit. Uh, what we need to do is we need to reboot to make sure it gets unloaded. So uh, run MK init RD here, and I'll put that in the notes too, just to remind you. Uh, and then once you do that, when you reboot, everything will be updated without the open source driver, and we run it one more time, and then we're done. One other note here is, is that Updates can break your NVIDIA driver, and that's the case on the system, actually. Uh, for Linux 4.10, we did need to patch a line in the driver just to enable it to compile uh, against this super new kernel. And the reason is this NVIDIA hasn't gotten up to speed with uh, releasing an update yet for this kernel, but we want this kernel because of all its new features for Ryzen. Uh, so I'm going to apply a patch to it, which will enable this driver to work. Uh, in general, this is not an issue at all for AMD cards. So with my AMD R9 Fury, I never have to worry about a kernel update breaking it because it's all open source. And so if you don't like dealing with that, definitely go with an AMD card. And I'll be waiting for their Vega series to switch this 1080 out for whatever the newest that AMD has to offer, just so I don't have to deal with the closed source drivers anymore. So will Linux work on Ryzen? The answer is absolutely yes. If you're running the newest distributions and the newest code uh, out of the box, this thing works great. I see all my cores, my memory, I have 3D acceleration enabled, the open and closed source drivers both work. Uh, the closed source drivers do take a little more work to do, but that will all be hashed out soon. Uh, whenever NVIDIA releases their new drivers, that will work uh, pretty seamlessly. So I really like the performance, I really like how easy it was to set up. Uh, there wasn't much to it, and I was happy that I could just go to the store, buy some parts, and then Linux worked, which really shows the power of the open source community and how having that many people contribute to it makes it so uh, robust and so versatile and so many different systems and configuration options, even when manufacturers don't always uh, issue those drivers themselves. So uh, super excited to do this, and I'll be posting more follow-up videos. Let me know if you have any questions about the system or configuration or installations. Uh, otherwise, I'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.